Welcome to People to People. I'm your host, Micah Mater. Let's get started. Now, the story about a unit of African-American soldiers from Chicago who were sent to France to fight during World War I is being recounted in a new documentary. Fighting on both fronts, the story of the 370th depicts the heroic tale of the 370th Infantry Regiment nearly 100 years after their service. Here's a look. The commanding officer of the 370th was Franklin A. Dennison. He held the rank of colonel. He led the men in the Mexican punitive expedition. He led them down to Camp Logan outside of Houston. He led them to France. And while serving in France, U.S. military leaders connived to get him out of his command. They concocted an idea that his health was so poor that he couldn't continue to command his troops. No white man was to take orders from any black officer because there were to be no black officers. There was a history of the military trying to undercut the opportunities for black officers, especially at the highest ranks, to serve in the American military. And this was what undid Franklin Dennison. He was removed wow. from command. Producer, replaced. writer, and director Mario Tharp is here to tell us a little bit more about this. First of all, welcome. Welcome. You, you used to Thank work you. here a long time ago, so thanks yeah, so much for yeah. coming back. Absolutely. Old home week. Yes. Um, what made you do this documentary? Hmm. The subject matter. Um, I like to tell a story that when I was approached, uh, the gentleman at Media Process Group, the production company, um, I literally signed on without knowing how much I was making. Mm -hmm. It's just really? that powerful of a, a story. A labor of love, huh? Yeah, and it's something that hasn't been told. That was really the one decision that in researching, I didn't find in documentary, a previous film, um, very few books, excerpts talked mm -hmm. about it, but I just felt like this was the perfect opportunity to tell about these heroic African-American men that people didn't know about. Who are these men? So they're, you know, the majority of them are from Bronzeville. Um, they were uh, basically 2,900, close to 3,000 soldiers. Um, they were called the 8th Illinois, um, and they're National Guard uh, soldiers. Um, prior to going off, or after they went off to the war, World War I in France, they were redesignated to 370th. So if you see both numbers, that's where it mm -hmm, comes from. Mm -hmm. But these men were lawyers, they were doctors, they were teachers, they were just men from the community. Um, <clears throat> but again, a majority of them came from Bronzeville, Springfield. Known as the Black Belt back known then. Known as the Black yeah. Belt mm -hmm. back then, or some people called it the South Side. Mm -hmm. uh, but the majority of the people called it the Black Belt. Mm -hmm. And these, these guys decided that they wanted to showed their patriotism um, during a period where black people were not recognized for being anything. Mm -hmm. um, and they went off to war and, and did an amazing job. And while they were there, of course, they, did, they, they suffered a lot of discrimination. They had to fight with the French. They didn't even fight with the American army. Um, and, and they did an exceptional job. Why weren't they with the American army? Well, I mean, I think about the period. Um, and, you know, I think we all know, if you know anything about history and Woodrow Wilson, uh, how he felt about, uh, about people of color, about mm -hmm. African Americans. Um, and that was, that was trickled down to a lot of the generals. So, you know, General Pershing, John Pershing, they called him Black Jack Pershing uh, because other black soldiers had fought with him in previous U.S.-led wars. Um, and, and it was just that period, it was that time where African Americans were, the majority of them, were, had labor roles, so they buried the dead, they unloaded ships, loaded ships, and it was rare for them to, under the U.S., to fight for, um, with the U.S., so they but, fought with the French Army. But with all the racial issues, especially here in America, why would they want to go to World War I, and why would they want to be a part of the National Guard? So, one of our interviewees said this, and I like to, to, to repeat what he said, because it makes a lot of sense. If you look at the soldiers that that joined the war from the South. Remember Jim Crow mm -hmm. and everything that was happening? It was an opportunity for those guys to get out of that hell. And although it was another form of hell, they knew that they didn't have to worry about being lynched. And it, it was just, again, an opportunity to show that they were patriotic, right. that they wanted the same, um, you know, um, things that, that whites, had and the opportunities. The opportunity. and they wanted to be called heroes yes, as well. Yes, and, yes. But when they came back home, it wasn't quite 
the heroism they thought it would be. No, was no, it? no, it, it, not at all. And if you bring it back to Chicago, there was, although the, 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 um, the race riots happened throughout the entire country in a lot of major cities, but focusing on Chicago, which we do in the film, mm -hmm. 1919 race riot, um, that was their first, when they came back, they really saw that we're still not respected. I mean, we, we fought for this country we had on the uniforms. Things haven't changed much. And things have not changed mm -hmm. much. And that happened again throughout the entire country. But these guys stood and said, you all will not disrespect or attack the citizens in our area, mm -hmm. black, the Black Belt, Bronzeville. And, um, so they uh, fought another battle once they, they did, came back they, home. They absolutely fought another battle. So it's a very interesting story. And we walk through the, from, from the, you know, the history of, of the Black Belt, of Bronzeville, and the Great Migration, and mm -hmm. how the Chicago Defender newspaper and Robert Abbott helped to get blacks or encourage blacks to move from the south to the north. A lot of them settled in Bronzeville or the Black Belt. And then we talk about, you know, a number of people mm -hmm. um, that were like a Colonel Dennison who, I don't know if we have time to talk about this, yeah. but, but basically he was one of the main characters where he was an officer, but again, the U.S. did not want black soldiers to even fight mm -hmm. uh, in combat with the U.S. So if they, of course, wanted to get rid of the, the officers. So and that's exactly what they did with Colonel Dennison, who was a stellar uh, officer from Chicago. From Chicago. Mm -hmm. And he, he got to France, and they found a way to send him back home and said he was sick. Wow. Now imagine what that does to the morale of these soldiers. And he wasn't sick. And he wasn't sick. And that's been documented. He was not sick. But again, he was a well-respected black officer. And that just did not sit well with the U.S. Army. They couldn't have a black man be stellar in, in what he's doing. So instead right. of leaving him there, they, they feigned his sickness, so you say, right. and sent him back home. Right. And that happened to a lot of the officers that was there. You know, Charles Young, who was um, over the, he was the head, the leading black officer for the U.S. Army. Mm -hmm. um, and there were a number of others, you know, Patton, who was part of the 370th. So they just whittled, whittled the, the army down, whittled the infantry down, that, didn't that, they? That is correct, yeah. yeah. How tough was it to tell this story? Because World War I, they're all, they're all gone now. So it, 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 it was tough. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I spent a lot, months, uh, just trying to track down the right people. Mm -hmm. And what would happen is I would speak to someone and they would lead me to someone else. Mm -hmm. And then that person would lead me to someone else. I mean, literally, um, the gentleman, the grandson, William Bratton McClennan is, is the grandson's name. Um, of he, Denison, Denison's grandson. No, so Not I'm sorry. He, so William Bratton was the chaplain. I think we were talking about this off camera. Yeah, <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> that's okay. Uh, but William Bratton was a chaplain and an and a captain mm -hmm. from Berean Baptist Church here in Chicago. Mm -hmm. um, and he was the pastor at the time that he went to World War I, to mm -hmm. France. Well, we found his grandson, wow. uh, who lives here on the south side of Chicago. Yeah. And he tells this amazing story about his grandfather and how proud he was yeah. that he fought. I mean, he was a pastor and had a congregation. And he left his congregation and went to fight. But he also documented. So there are two books. One of them was, is a journal. And he documented all wow. the way from training. Did in, he? In did camp. you see this? This oh, yeah, I read the. Wow. Yeah, I read the. It, it, it's yeah, the book is available. I mean, that's firsthand. You got it firsthand. Absolutely, absolutely. And it's just an amazing story to just hear or to read. Yeah. You know, when he was in Camp Logan and the things that he experienced and how the treatment that all of the black soldiers were receiving, and then when they went off to France and the issues that they had, and then when they came back. Wow. So that is that was written by this amazing. Yeah. Um, um, he was an officer because yeah. he was a captain. Quickly, how's it, how has this changed your life? Wow. You know, um, being, uh, you know, the time that we live in, yeah. it has really uh, opened my eyes to show that, that these soldiers really have been trying, or they were trying, to, to show people that we want to be considered Americans and we want to show you how how much we want to be respected. That's wonderful. And, and it's just, you know, that, that's probably the biggest thing for me is just uh, knowing how hard yeah. these guys fought and everything that they went through. So I guess I shouldn't complain about a lot of right, things exactly, because exactly. the things that they had to go through amazing. was just amazing. Mario, thank you very much. Yes. It's called The Fighting on Both Fronts, the story of the 370th. And it's going to be airing on WTTW? Yes, on Friday, November 10th at 8.30 p.m. Phenomenal. Tune in, please. It's an Everybody, amazing check film. Check it out. Amazing film.